Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Last week I had a bit of a cold that turned into man flu, so I missed the entire Wings and Wheels show. I still had the money I had planned to splurge there in my pocket, so I splurged online instead. The result was this Tamiya XR311 reissue. It comes from the days when Tamiya kits were basically static model bodies with an RC chassis. It's only rear wheel drive and there's no differential to worry about, so I expect it's going to get stuck a lot. So we might need to figure out a working winch. They've put some nice images of the original setup on the side. This one with the rechargeable battery pack and the rather ancient mechanical speed control. The other image shows the loose cell setup. I'm pretty sure all the old Tamiya's were designed around four C size alkalines. The performance must have been quite, well, interesting. The other side has some more images of the truck, and a rather nice bit of text describing it. You can pause if you want to read it, but the best bit is the original model dates from 1977, which definitely makes it fall into the vintage category. As for the required bits, it's the usual set, radio, servo, ESC and some batteries. The re-release is quite happy with all the modern gear. Since this is the re-release and not an original, they go for silly money, I plan on doing some mods here and there, especially as for a Tamiya re-release this one's pretty much the cheapest. In the box we see the lovely presentation of the older kits, everything laid out to see and neatly arranged. Far nicer to open the box to than the usual big plastic bag stuffed under the shell of the more recent kits. Some of the higher end Tamiyas still come like this, but it's pretty rare. It does make sense to reduce the packaging, as once you've taken it all out of the box, it's only going to end up in the bin. Right then, first out is the driver. Separate arms that need gluing on, so we'll need the body complete first to get the position right. We've got two heads too, one with a helmet and one without. Nice. Here we have the main bit of the body. The plastic's quite thin compared to the more recent hard bodies, and there's a rather unsightly patch from the mould process. Feels pretty smooth though, so I'm sure it'll be okay under some paint. Next out is the underbody, which seems to fit rather well. With all the other bits attached, it should make for a nice sturdy construction. Some more body bits, engine cover, roof, window frames, and I think the heel board. It really is just like a plastic static kit. Another pack of body parts, lots of them. Huge amount of detail. Even the dials on the dash have visible markings. Nice. This sprue is more like the usual bits you'd expect from an RC kit. Gearbox covers and some suspension bits. Feels like it's moulded from the bog standard Tamiya stiff plastic. The wheels are a bit novel. They're bead locks, so no glue, and they don't have a hex or pin drive. Instead, they bolt directly to a drive flange, pretty much the same as a full size car. The tyres are a bit odd too. They have a very round profile, almost like an aircraft tyre. They're quite a hard rubber and don't have much tread, but they do look a lot like the tyres from the full size truck. Some clear plastic bits, windscreen panels and some light lenses. I think we're going to have to have a look at fitting some LEDs. Double sided sticky foam and some black plastic mesh to go around the engine bay, which should look rather good. Antenna tube, which there's not much I can really say about. A clear plastic chassis guard, which is quite important as the torsion bars are otherwise open to damage on the bottom of the chassis. Probably the smallest decal sheet I've come across. <laughs> The nice box on the side with the window contains some metal chassis bits. For once, it's not a plastic tub. Even the housing for the bevel gears is cast aluminium. We've got the bushings, which could cause some problems. Some of them are a very odd size, so changing them to ball bearings could be interesting. We might have to build with the bushes. Here we have the rest of the suspension parts. Two of the same sprue. Looks like the steering parts are here too. I'm expecting the front end to have some rather excessive play once we've built it, so I reckon there's going to be some mods to be done there too. In the blue box we've got some Loctite. Fairly important since the kit has a lot of machine screws and plain nuts. Long screws and some brass tubes. What looks like the steering parts. Screws and washers. Spline shafts and some interesting looking brass bits. Body mounts maybe? The plastic gears, they do look a bit thin compared to the recent kits. The usual little tool bag with a little tube of ceramic grease. More fixings, including a few nylock nuts. Some more metal chassis bits, which look like the radio tray side parts. Yet another bag of fixings. The plastic front bumper, and we might have to do something about this as it's not quite a scale feature. 
And lastly, the good old Tamiya motor. Not sure how it's going to run with it, we might end up changing for something with a few more turns. Under the cardboard bits is the paperwork. Not sure what this one's about, it's mostly in Japanese, it looks like some sort of parts list. This one seems to be concerned with explaining that knives are indeed dangerous. And of course, there's the manual, and it's just what you'd expect from a Tamiya. Nice clear drawings, neatly broken up into manageable steps. Nice. Well, that's all the bits from the box. I still need to decide on the electronics. It's definitely going to get a 2.5 gig radio. There's a version of the kit that comes with an ESC, most likely a Tamiya 104BK, and I just happen to have a couple of them on the shelf, so they'll do. For steering, I can't imagine it's going to need anything more than a basic standard size servo, so I'll get something cheap and cheerful. I reckon with some care, you could probably get the kit and all the other bits, including paint, for under 200 quid. Not bad really, considering the amount of metalwork and all the detail in the body. I'm not too sure when we'll get to start the build. I want to get the wiring done on the Tiger tank next, since we've got the connector installed, and I didn't get time to do it this week. So, maybe we'll start the week after. There's a good chance I'll have all the other bits and pieces by then too, so that works. In the meantime though, I do hope you liked the video, thanks for watching, and if you're not already subscribed, why not click the button? It's free after all. Bye guys! <laughs>